Our scripture passage this morning comes from the 29th chapter of the book of Jeremiah, the first 14 verses. Listen here and receive God's word for us. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priest, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jeconia and the Queen Mother, the court officials, the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the artisans and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elasa, son of Shephan, and Jemariah, son of Hilkiah, whom King Zedekiah of Judah sent to Babylon to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. It said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you, and do not listen to the dreams that they dream, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As a black woman descended from African people brought to and enslaved in this country, the first few verses of the 29th chapter of Jeremiah are difficult to hear. Jeremiah's proclamation that the exiles should settle in, build, plant, marry, multiply, and pray for the welfare of their captive city must have been difficult for the Israelites to receive as well. Although the Israelites were not necessarily enslaved in Babylon and might better be characterized as prisoners of war, at the very least, they were not free to return to their beloved homeland until God said so. According to Jeremiah, the Lord said they would be in Babylon for 70 years. Undoubtedly, every adult who was captive there during the time of Jeremiah's prophecy would never return home to Jerusalem. The words of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah to the Israelites who were longing for home Enslaved Africans, indigenous and First Nation peoples, or anyone who has been forcibly taken or driven from their homeland are not comforting nor encouraging. And yet we have the words of Jesus to remind us that foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Today we celebrate the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a modern-day prophet, a man who always had a desire and will to stand against that which was evil in the sight of God, slavery, segregation, Jim Crow laws, racism, separate but not equal, injustice based on a person's skin color, violence, and war. Dr. King wrote, because of the influence of my mother and father, I always had a deep urge to serve humanity, but I didn't start out with an interest to enter the ministry. 
I thought I could probably do it better as a lawyer or a doctor. Close quote. But as God would have it, and as he was completing a PhD at Boston College School of Theology and Ministry, Dr. King was called to pastor the Dexter Street Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. Dr. King and the rest, they say, is history. Dr. King was not a man without flaws, but his commitment to prophetic ministry, to flat-footedly and unapologetically proclaim that thus saith the Lord, was bold, courageous, and dangerous. The work of the Lord's prophet, who forthrightly and truthfully deliver God's word to God's people, is not only a thankless assignment, but it can also be and often is life-threatening. Prophets called by God are often unassuming. They may be known within their immediate communities, but not widely known. When called by God, prophets do not seek nor plan to leave their secure existence to speak truth to power, to stand against injustice, to take on machines, princes, and principalities. Prophets called by God are typically flawed, reluctant, and often run in the opposite direction from which God has commanded them to go. In my estimation, to speak what says the Lord is an assignment that no one campaigns for or really wants. Trust me. <laughs> Prophetic words are typically disdained when they are unpopular, are discounted when they do not immediately come into existence, and are outright ignored if they do not fit the prevalent narrative. However, when God calls a person to prophesy to God's people, God's word will come to culmination. And when God says it, that settles it. Jeremiah, called by God before he was formed in his mother, mother's womb, continually warns the people of God that if they fail to turn from their wicked ways, they will be taken into exile. In this chapter, Jeremiah dispatches a letter to the exiles to again counter and correct the prophecy of others who were selling them a bill of goods, the dream that their time in Babylon would soon be over. False prophets were declaring in the name of the Lord that the Israelites would soon return to Jerusalem and that everything would be as it had been before their time of captivity. Now, I would not put myself in a position to determine whose prophetic word is from God or not. The veracity of prophecy is only verify, verifiable in, hand, in hindsight. However, what I do know is that the word of God may not always be easy to declare, to receive, or to live into. But when we hear a word that confirms that no matter what we may experience or endure, that God is with us, that God is providential, cares, and knows what we need, is concerned about what we are going through and is invested in our welfare, then that's a word upon which we can stand, endure, and look to build a future. Jeremiah prophesied that even though the people of God were to make themselves at home, they were not to assimilate and become like their captors, but to continue to live in a community and as the people of God, to be an example of faithfulness and godliness before the Babylonians, to continue to worship and to trust their God, not take on the false gods and lifestyles of their captors. Dr. King was a son of the South. He knew what the prevalent race and strictures expected from him and put in place that he not succeed. Dr. King experienced the indignities of being a child and an adult living under the laws of Jim Crow, separate and unequal, not allowed to shop, eat, recreate, or receive his education in places designed or designated for whites only. However, Dr. King, raised by his parents and in a community that nurtured and encouraged their youth to be all that God had called them to be, encouraged to, was encouraged to receive a good education and to serve the community in God. Dr. King was always reassured that God would open doors and make a way out of no way. The audacity of his parents, his community, and his faith propelled Dr. King to be the man that God created him to be, a man of courage, 
conviction, and compulsion, who believed that God would be an ever-present help in a time of need, a provider and a protector, and that in God's time, all of God's people would be judged by the content of their character and not the color of their skin. Dr. King was a man of faith who believed that one day we would all be equal, treated justly, and free. Dr. King knew that like Moses, he might not see the promised land, but he believed that one day we would all get there. Dr. King was a man of devotion who served a risen Savior who gave his very life for us that we might have life eternal. There's an old Yiddish proverb that says, we make plans and God laughs. There is nothing like the laughter of God. For you see, when God laughs, barren bodies bear fruit. When God laughs, strongholds are broken down. When God laughs, old things are made new. When God laughs, captives are set free. When God laughs, that which has died is resurrected from the dead. Beloved, only God is providential, knows our life's trajectory and our future. Only prophecy sent from God is true and comes to fruition. And only God helps and does not harm us. God sent us a Savior who is exceedingly and abundantly able to overcome everything and anything that might come or attempt to overtake us. Yes, exile and enslavement may continue for generations. Yes, false prophets may be among us perverting the word of God. Yes, mountaintop experiences may end in death. Yes, dark days of racism, injustice, inequities, inequality, sickness, and even despair may be overwhelming and ongoing. But to paraphrase Dr. King and others, the arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice, it bends towards morality, it bends towards equality, equity, and health. As a black woman descended from enslaved African people, I am concerned and I find comfort, encouragement, assurance, and strength in Jeremiah's prophecy. For you see, my people, they settled in. They built and they planted. They married and they increased. And they stood up and marched. They held hands and demanded to be recognized as more than three-fifths of a person and deserving of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, justice, and peace. And boldly declared that we too are the people of God. And we will one day overcome for we trust in God's words. I know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not to harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me, the Lord says, and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you. And I will bring you back, back from the place from which I sent you into exile. Beloved of God, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And God's word is so. Amen.